Okie dokie. <coughs> well, we tested the power supply. Uh, <coughs> without killing ourselves, but I think that might have been a minor miracle because I did not have the uh, meter reading high voltage. I had the meter switch in the wrong position. Uh, I thought I had no high voltage, but in fact, uh, I did. And uh, I was being careful, not putting my hands in the thing, and not assuming that because the meter didn't say I had high voltage and I really didn't. But uh, after what I thought was five or six failed attempts to uh, make the power supply work, I decided to uh, move the uh, amplifier around so I could check the fuses in the back. And I didn't short out the power supply with the uh, handy dandy thing here. And that could have been disastrous because there really was 3,000 volts there all along. The power supply was working properly all along, and I just didn't know it because I wasn't using the switch, the meter switch properly. It had been so many months since I'd operated the amplifier that I forgot that it only reads the plate voltage when you select the uh, <laughs> right position. It's a multifunction meter and it can read forward power, reverse power, uh, screen current, or plate voltage. There are two meters and one meter constantly reads plate current. It always reads plate current. But it doesn't read plate voltage unless you select the right goddamn uh, position on the switch. So all this time I've got 4,000 volts uh, on this power supply. It's hotter than hell. It's working just fine. And I don't know it. And I don't know it because I'm not reading the damn not using the meter switch correctly. So I can't measure it because I've got it in the wrong position. So that kind of stupid mistake, I say an accident is always a cascade of small mistakes. Uh, you know, you forget one you forget one thing, you make one little mistake, you make another little mistake, you make a third little mistake, and in the end they add up to a real catastrophe. And uh, if you study aviation accidents like I have, uh, or other kinds of, uh, of accidents, so-called accidents, you always find this cascade of mistakes. One stupid little mistake after another. Any one of which you know, shouldn't be a big deal, 
but um, they add up. One mistake allows another mistake to be more important, and then the third thing uh, kills you. And that one could have killed me without a doubt. Just, just no question about it. If I had stuck my hand in there after three or four times of failing to read the, the meter properly, if I'd stuck my hand in there because I was convinced that there was no B+, plus, uh, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I'd be dead. You don't survive contacting 4,000 volts at an ampere, uh, actually unlimited amount of current for, for a few milliseconds. They'd probably give you 10 amps of current. You don't survive that. Uh, or if you do, you, uh, you're a vegetable. So, let that be a lesson. It's a lesson to me. It is a lesson to me, and it should be a lesson to you. And... I think there's got to be some better way to detect the presence of high voltage. Uh, now I do have a high voltage insulated probe that will you know, can measure 10,000 volts with. And I suppose the prudent thing to do would be to have that set up with the vacuum tube voltmeter and be able to stick a probe in there and not rely on the meter in the amplifier. I think that's probably a potentially fatal mistake to uh, only use the amplifier's meter uh, as, as your point of reference for whether or not high voltage is there and how, how much. Because uh, any number of things, all it takes is one, one open resistor to uh, render that meter uh, inoperative. One open resistor is all it takes to uh, keep it from being able to read any plate voltage. And so if you've got this 5 cent open resistor there keeping you from reading it uh, and you believe the meter, uh, you're, you're one dead sucker. That's just a recipe for being dead. 